Okay, <laughs> a bit of kerfuffle on the um, filming thing here. I've I've seemed to have lost my SD cards for the Sony, so we don't have the overhead view today. Um, we've got the Huawei sort of mid shot, and we've got possibility for a close up on the iPhone, which is here with a good sound source, which is going in here. But whoops, we got Andy's um, lovely old Epiphone. Broadway, so this is uh, a big semi-acoustic, well, hollow body actually, not semi-acoustic, hollow body jazz style guitar, and uh, it's a beautiful looking thing with its its gold um, accoutrements, um, you know, that sort of, I, 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 as soon as I played this I liked it. Currently it's got flat wound strings on it, I think, maybe it hasn't, what, what had flat wound? Oh, no, it doesn't, it had had flat ones. Something the other day had flat ones. Ah, the Sheraton. That's right. So, um, yeah. So this this is uh, this has got regular um, regular tens. So, a couple of things this is down for. First one is a new nut. Now, straight away, I will say, even though this is a horrible nut, you can see here that it's not. It's it's one of these uh, ones that are constructed in a way that is sensible, and all of them should be done. You can see that the nut is positioned on a cut shelf, right? It isn't put there and then this finish here sprayed up to it. Yes, you've got the cover butting up to it, but the nut itself is, is free. It sits on the sh a shelf and can be removed without too much trouble, thankfully, um, because I've had a couple of instances just recently where that hasn't been the case. And the, it's the cheaper factories, unfortunately, seem to be hell-bent on spraying after they've put the nut on and the result of that is you get a nut that is practically glued permanently into place so the only way you can get round it is to um, basically you have to break it off and then you get into all kinds of trouble. Um, so a couple of things about this. So first of all Andy's not pleased with the bridge that moves around all over the place. He wants the bridge pinned down um, and you can either, many people either pin it in one place and call it quits um, I, I think we could secure it in place just as easily with some um, some duct tape uh, to keep it double-sided tape to keep it in place. Um, but also, what he wants is this wooden bridge removing and, and replacing with um, a Tom-style bridge, Nashville-style bridge to it, to intonate, give more intonation room. And one of the reasons why that will improve things is because this wooden bridge is built for a four-wound two-plane configuration and. This is currently strung with a three plane, three wound. So basically the G is in the wrong place. And you can actually hear that being out right from the outset. If you just play it and do a, an audible test, you can hear that out. So the task here is to give the guitar a setup. It looks like it could really use a nice clean, but also will benefit from precision level setup. We're going to replace the bridge top, but we may need to still reduce this um, bridge here because um, this uh, he wants this action reducing as well and it's currently on its stops with this configuration so we're going to try measure and test the gold replacement tom section and see if we need to reduce this bottom section anymore um, so new adjustable tusk nut precision fret leveling clean the board um, adjust this pickup it seems to be jammed in some sort of strange position and sort out the bridge. So that's the sort of principal um, jobs for this guitar. And then hopefully next week we'll take both these, or both, all three of um, Andy's guitars back up to him in Swindon. Um, so I've got these two running and to, like I say, the, the I don't know what the memory allocation on the, or how much memory is left on the Hawaii one, but anyway, we'll see. So something could run out at any point here. Okay, so here's our replacement Tom bridge. Very beautiful. Gosh, it's a handsome thing, isn't it? It's a Goto. Goto. And it's designed to, should be, designed to sit on top of, straight on top of the posts. Um, but of course, the first thing we will need to find out, which we don't currently know, is how 
much different the height is to determine whether we're going to need to make adjustments. Now, if we're going to make adjustments, we probably want to make adjustments onto this flat top section of the bridge as opposed to the curved lower section. We want to obviously leave that as is. So first thing I'd want to do is I'd want to remove or loosen the strings so we can remove the bridge top and we'll have a look at that. And let's also get take off the um, truss rod cover so we can remove this old nut and then we'll put in a new adjustable tusk jobby. Um, so uh, I'm happy to say, I'm very thrilled to say that today we've got sunshine back. It feels like the storm of the last month has passed, which is incredible because as many of you will know, it's been incredibly cold and wet May. Um, hitherto unseen, unheard of. Um, so, okay, so you can see, you can see under here, I'm, I'm going a big deal, I'm, I'm going a big deal at the moment on these, this nut situation. You can see on this one here, even where they've cut or somebody's trimmed the edge of this shelf, you can see how it's um, caused the Sorry, I'm just watching these these little tag ends left over. They drag round and scratch the um, finish if you're not careful. So uh, that's why I always cut them back. Um, yeah, you can <coughs> you can see where <coughs> where this has been uh, the edge has been cut or chopped and it's cracked, as as always happens with brittle finish. So it's a a real challenge all the time. This brittle thick brittle finish stuff. Um, and never more so than when they take the lazy way and uh, put the nut um, in first and then do all the spraying because you get all this huge build up. Okay, so first of all, out comes the bridge. We've got a bit of, it looks like masking tape from old sitting on there. And there's a, you can see there's a lightened patch where the bridge has always stood. <laughs> But I think for Andy, I think it's I think it's off it's been off putting the fact that it can move and it can be knocked out of shape um, without ex meaning it too. So I think the, I think we can improve things significantly by um, double sided taping it down. Okay, so my first observation um, is I'll say straight away that these two components together go even taller I think than we've currently got. And so let's just Let's make a measurement, first of all, of this one. So I'm going to measure, um, let's do, let's do, let's do one of both of them. Let's do the, uh, which side are we? That's the compensated side. Let's do just the B, that should be, no, the G actually, let's do the G. The G is our measure, measuring point. So the G is 20.38. That's what we've got. I think I need to remove these old measurements on here. 20.38. It's been a it's been a big few days since I've um, been on filming. Um, the main one is kind of nothing to do with guitars for me, really. It's to do with the uh, um, let's go wood wood bridge. Sorry, I'm going to come back in a second. Wood bridge. Uh, what are we saying? The G. The G. And we're seeing it sits down there like that, round bit like that, and then comes out like that. Okay. So at the G point, we're going to 20.48. Yeah, it's been a pretty huge few days because I got in, did my first parish council meeting as a new councillor. And it's been. Um, let me just do something else while I'm at it. Uh, it's been it's been quite nerve wracking on the lead up to it because there's been a lot of uh, unpleasantness in the, the, our village politics. Um, some some of it because uh, uh, well, it feels like our our understanding, our experience is that some people have been working not in the village's interest. Let's put it that way. 
um, and been pushing for larger developments than the village wants. Anyway, um, and that's our, our take on it, and it's no secret that's our take on it. So we we shared that and stood stood on a platform of that for election and got <laughs> elected. But anyway, so now we've got a chance to make a, a difference to that. So this is the treble end, and this is the bass end. Yeah, yeah, offset, right. Um, yeah, so so with all of that background, we got went and did our first parish council meeting, which was potentially going to be very um, fireworky. Um, but actually, in the end, it went off fairly um, peacefully, isn't quite the word, but fairly productively, I'm, I'm pleased to say. So it could have been a lot worse. Now this is interesting. This thing has practically no slots at all in the top of the um, the saddles. Um, they, they have impressions, but they don't actually s go into the apex at all. So I really don't know what the point is. So on this is, we've got a higher height of versus the next one of 22.22. So evidently there's a difference already of uh, 2.26, 2 2.26, but that's without the ability to go any lower, and so we we completely, if we put that on, we, we can't go any lower, so we, it sort of defeats the object. Now, the question is, what do we do to reduce this down? Um, there, there are really only two options. One is, we take down the underside of the bridge here, so that this area here, underneath the, where, where the hole is, we take that down, um, so that sits lower down, or we thin out the wood here um, by X amount, and that's feasible, we could do that, um, we could do it and keep it nice and straight. Of course the problem with that is we would have to remove and refit these posts. Um, and they may be glued in, so they may not want to play that game. It's, it all depends on what you feel like doing, because we really need to um, we need to lose. If we're going to get a couple of millimeters of playing action difference, we need to lose quite a lot here. We need to lose minus 2.26, and we need let's say hmm, let's say we want to go down. What would we be a millimeter? 1.5. Let's call it another two to be on the safe side. That means we've got a total 4.25, let's say, to be safe. 4.25 lower to get this saddle, to make this guitar more playable. Now that's a quite a lot of material. Um, let's, let's just get it marked up. That is a lot of material. Wow. So 4.25, that would be the entire top chamfer of this piece of wood removed. I don't know how I'm showing this close-up camera. Okay, so you see you've got a you've got a, a lower, wider part. You've got a bevel, and you've got an upper part. To remove 4.25 would be to remove the entire upper beveled part, which would leave us with a very thin piece of wood. But actually the thinness of the piece of wood is not really a problem. Um, the alternative is we take 4.25 off the, um, the metal bridge structure, which as you can gather is going to be a lot harder to do. Um, so realistically, I, I mean we can gain straight away, like you can take the thumb wheels off and you gain um, we don't gain much actually because of the curved underside. So let's not remove the thumb wheels because we want, you know, we want to retain some up and down movement. <coughs> so 4.25 is what we need to remove. That's going to be this piece here taken down. Now this this is um, looks like rosewood, and um, what we clearly have is a curve here, which is important for it to stay. Um, snug fitting to the under, uh, to the top side of the, the body of the um, guitar. 
it doesn't really need to be that wide it's just a sort of convention um, it makes it feel like it spreads out the load more um, but it could be it could be narrower if you wanted it to it would still um, it would still hold the bridge in place and it would still the idea is people people think that you know you need it to transmit the tone or the vibration of the strings through to the sound hole the truth about a semi-acoustic guitar is that it, I think people people kind of get mixed up with the, the whole thing about electroacoustic pickups or you know or electric pickups. On this guitar, the sound is made predominantly, almost predominantly, almost entirely by the strings moving in a magnetic field. There is, of course, an acoustic component that's thrown out around the room while you're playing, but it's not that acoustic component isn't somehow fed into the pickup. It's not picked up by the pickup, unless the pickup is microphonic or unless there's a microphone system in there that picks up, like an acoustic mic system, that picks up the acoustic uh, tones and amplifies them, which of course you could do if you wanted a true electroacoustic blend, but they, these guitars aren't that. They're, they're hollow guitars with um, magnetic pickups in them, which is which, is, which means the, the argument about, you, you may, let's say you um, reduce the footprint of this, you may transmit a bit less uh, vibration through to the body. And in the room, this sound that I'm making now, you might hear it a bit less, but it wouldn't have any negative impact on the um, production of tone from the pickups. So, so the problem we got here is whether we kept this bridge on here or not, we still would need to re reduce the height of all of this down considerably. Now, in some sense, we could easily, the quickest um, reduction we could do, bizarrely, uh, bizarre as it sounds, would be to retain this and just lose that. Um, but we don't want to do that because this is not um, accurately in intonated for the three and three. This is a three, a four and two. Um, but... Um, and, and I know for a fact that Andy doesn't want this wood thing back on here. He wants an adjustable, individually adjustable thing. Even though it's you know, compensated, it's designed to have the bridge in the right place and then for this to make the final difference. And you can you can get it pretty accurately. But um, that's no longer part of our thing. So the only option we've got if we're going to have an, a metal bridge with individual intonation uh, settings is a tunematic type bridge that follows the same center post centers as this which is this Nashville type of thing that you really won't find too many thinner ones and I don't I genuinely don't think you'll find in fact a lot of them are actually taller than this you certainly won't find one um, that comes in a four nearly five millimeters uh, narrower narrower than this so we do have to make a, a decision on this now um, we can. We've got some options. We can either modify this one, or we can we can make a copy of this one and modify it. Um, for example, um, you know, if we if we get stuck, we can always make uh, another um, another piece, and we could we could make a. In fact, we could cut out to begin with, make a template for cutting this same curve later if we really wanted to be, um, you know, ultra careful. So we could keep the keep this curve. You could you could duplicate that curve. This isn't perfectly right anyway. It's a bit you can see with a chisel or a plane hasn't done it very smoothly. But we could copy that curve as a reference and we could duplicate it using a router on a piece of rosewood, which we could then cut and do the same thing with this if 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 something went wrong and this wasn't a strong enough item. Or you could buy another one of these units. They come together like that, you can get them quite cheaply. So I think realistically, we're going to have to explore the idea of removing these from this piece um, in order to file this down. And as I say, I think we, we, will, we could get most of the reduction out of this piece here. Um, the, only, the only slight problem is that in doing so, we will have to get these posts or the new posts, same thing, just a bit shinier. We're going to have to drill down a little bit further um, and we'll have to... Actually, we won't, we'll go through, and then we'll just stop the, um, the stop these. We'll glue these in place when they're flush with that, because that's the best way of using the entire um, the remaining amount of wood. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to accept that I'm going to lose the thread on these original um, 
things because we've got a replacement set here. And I'm going to do that by, or I'm going to do that in, in, by sacrificing these to get these out. And that, at a straight grab, that's perfectly fine. Actually, we haven't sacrificed them. We've just, but we had to be prepared to by holding them tight with a sort of mole gripsy things. And thankfully, these ones weren't glued in. They look like they've just been lightly screwed in. Okay. So that gives me free access to cut down this whole section here. Now, I think I would probably go and do it on the sanding drum, just kind of take away this whole area here, and then I will go back to a flat block and sand this out. Um, and then we just need to make sure that we've, we've retained the position of the holes or an extend them. In fact, that probably the smartest thing to do is extend them through now to the other side. Um, um, now this is not the right gauge. Let's see what the gauge is. These are very tall, so they're a bit too tall. We could use them, but we'd have to cut them. So what's our 385 on the th 385 thread? So uh, so we'd want a three and a half, we want a three and a half mil bit really. Um, if we have one, I don't know if we've got one. Three and a half bit. That's a four. I'll do a bit of digging around and hunting one down at this point. Okay, three and a half mil bit. Well, let's let's put this on the hanger. Make sure nothing's going to drop off. Everything's good. Right. Hang up. I'll we'll look for the three and a half mil bit now. You know, you always start off with all your drills neatly laid out, don't you? And then eventually they all end up in a big pile. I think we'll have to use whatever we can find that's three and a half mil. 4.5, 3 3.9, 3.5. Okay, okay. That feels about right. So I'm going to go through, right the way through these, um, and I don't have a curved bit of wood to rest it on, so I will get a soft piece of soft wood narrow as possible. I could rig it up in the pillar drill, but really for the amount that it's going to go through here, it's prob probably hardly worth it. So I'm going to go through, first of all, as a mark to know where, where we exit. Okay. That way I, I, I've got, don't lose track. There we go. So the next thing I'm going to do is go over to the pillar sander and I'm going to I'll take you with me because you know you never know it may get loud it may not um, well no, I won't I won't take you visually with me because it's too much hassle but I will connect up my vacuum cleaner to the sander here I've got one of the most important bits of wood that I've misplaced. This is a third part of a new guitar body that I'm building. Um, I lost for a moment, misplaced, and it was critical. So thankfully I found it back. Right, now I'm going to run the two of these. really doing is I'm just digging right in with uh, to get the deck first close to scallop and I'm taking the crests of the scallop bits off and hopefully we'll get it 
sort of thing. A bit nice. And then we'll flatten it out. Okay. We'll flatten it out on the sanding block. So there we have a fair amount taken off. I get the block out. And then it's just a matter of, or just a matter, it's a matter of sanding this fairly smoothly and as evenly as we can go. And we can sort of check each end against the other. Okay. Yeah, it's quite good. Um, just keep going, really. Yeah, so we had our first parish council meeting, and I think we did a pretty good job, all things considered. Um, and I think that I think the uh, existing members and public could see that we had a pretty good grasp of what we were talking about, which I think was the best bit. We were able to reassure people that we, we knew what was going on and done our homework and when it came to issues of planning and getting this neighbourhood plan done right then we, we I think we were able to give them a bit of confidence and there was a great, great moment when after four years or four years into this whole planning process, somebody in the meeting asked the chair how many homes were required to be built. And bottom line is he still didn't know. And yet he'd, him and his team had written this neighborhood plan, proposing 35 for this tiny village instead of any other number um, and we, we knew for a fact that, that we had been given an indicative figure of merely, only, 20 to begin with, and it could have been somewhat less than that. Um, so it's quite, quite astonishing, really. Okay, so what, we, what we're going to do is we're going to keep going and get this nice and flat. As, um, we're not far off. Then once it's flat, I'm going to put these back in as far as they'll go and then I'm going to put the little wheels on and we're going to seat this on and we're going to cut it short. We're going to Dremel thingy, cut it short so that there's no massive stick up and then we should have a lower bridge to be going on with. A bridge that's in total four millimeters lower. So for the purpose of being able to reduce the action and have a bridge that then lets Every individual, uh, every individual intonation be set. Doesn't sound very good English, but um, okay. So that's the thing, and those are the things. That's lower. I mean, this doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm just, I'm just doing it for. Um, I'm not sure what the word, precision's sake. I was going to change this over for fresh paper um, until I realised that. I'm just about out of the double-sided tape for remaking this board as a sanding block, so um, better I hold off until I get some more. Okay, it's just a little bit of a dip on one side that still needs getting out. I'll just put a bit of extra force downwards. Yeah, anyway, so the, the good thing about having got that bit of, I mean, got the local politics thing going, started, the first meeting done and dusted, it feels like the breaking the spell sort of thing, and we can go on from there and hopefully be productive and get a much better outcome for the village. It's the whole plan. Um, but you know those kind of things. Sometimes you're dr dreading them for quite some time, and then when they finally come and you know, they they go and they're out of the way, you feel a massive sense of relief, which is which is 
nice feeling when you when you get it done. Now this is getting thinner in the sense that it's getting a little, it, it's slightly harder to manipulate, hold and sand, but I mean to be fair we are as near as darn it won't make much difference. Um, so what I, will, I won't put the feet in just yet, I just want to get this as close to as flat as I can. It's not going to be perfect because it's difficult to do ha handling it like this. It's flexible and you're pressing down and things flex so you never get an absolutely mathematically straight line unfortunately. Even if you can hold it down right in the middle like this, it's still never quite right. I think that, to be honest, I think that's as, as near as darn it. There's a little dip, dip at one end, but I mean, I could just perhaps press down a little bit of that and just to clean that up. We're very close, very close. Right, so the next thing we're going to do, now this is a fun bit, I'm going to need to scrunch the end of these again to get these in, um, to basically cut a thread, um, but I'm going to be cutting these short by quite some way anyway, so that's not really a problem. So we can afford to scrunch this end bit a little bit, and we're going to come through either to flush with or if, if anything just short short of the underside here because what we don't want is it to stick through and press on the finish um, we cover it over anyway but I think that's nearly there we can also sand that a little bit just to be absolutely certain um, but I wanted it in as far as it will go to keep it steady so we've got some new are they new ones? Oh, they are new ones, but they're struggling to go on the second because I've just um, whoop, I just slightly scrunched the uh, thing. I perhaps should have put them on first and then scrunched the end. Really, they will go on, but they'll just slightly cut the thread where I've scrunched it. There you go. So then that's what we're aiming to do: to get that down to there. Very nice. Now, just as a quick test, uh, if we call that not a good test I need to get the other one in but if we called let's assume they're the same if we call that one the G we are down to now 18.3 versus 22 uh, sorry versus 20 so we have gone down 18.3 uh, to we've gone down almost exactly the form 4.25 millimeters so that's pretty good so um, we'll get the other one in could do this thing like I said this time we'll put this one on first so whatever crunchy things we make won't be in the way we get the both ends are the same actually that ends more sticky outy the sticky in the sticky outy end yeah so so the politics thing is kind of the, the spell is broken which is great and then on top of that the storms cold weather has just cleared now for a bit and so we've got what appears to be oh, our summer back or our summer I won't say back because it sounds like it was here already but um, we've got our summer for a while um, which is great it's very pleasing so these are these are sticking just leaning out very slightly so I've just got to coax it back in so we don't end up with these too far apart it's a bit organic. There's no, there's no um, you know, scientific way to ensure this. Um, I'm just winding that back in as well, so it's not too close. Okay. So there we have it. Now, obviously, you can see that there's much too tall on those spikes. We have no need for that. We do need a bit. Let, let's give ourselves a little bit of room because 
um, you may want to, and you may want to raise it or something. Uh, we, we said that the height of 20.48 was too, was a little bit too high, and he was looking to re reduce that. So we're now saying we've got 19.82. So that could go down a millimeter from its original position, and I'm still up a bit. So we go down, and we're on. We can go down from the 20.48 to. 18.8, so that's 1.4, is that right? 1.4, something like that, 20, uh, 1.6, actually about 1.5. So there's about 1.5 millimeters drop available now, thanks to doing this. Um, the, the actually the thing I'm just thinking is, when, to go up and down on these, you don't actually need to leave anything sticking up from your lowest point, so it might be smart uh, to just remove it right down to its lowest point. Um, go to its lowest point at all, and then if we go up, then the end sinks in a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll mark this on here. I'm going to need to come on, slice it. That's visible enough. Both ones. Yep, you can see it. it may need a, a tiny bit of filing at the end. And here we have the Dremel to do the job. Cutting disc. I've lost the little uh, clutch spannery thing that does the grabbing and removing and things here, which is a bit. Annoying. I cleaned up the other day as well and I still couldn't find it so Lord knows where it's gone. Right, so I think what I'll do is I'm going to place this in a vise over there and then um, bring the piece to it. it that way. So just hold it tight for a second. Off. Just I'm going to take the burrs off this edge. It won't be uh, feelable anyhow because it's going to be just just shy, short of the top. I think. It's actually very easy to handle. So I'll do, I'll do a bit of sanding. The old get out of jail sanding. And 
that. Now it goes on there. So on base, nice and low. We've got a nice low profile bridge. You know, the only, I was gonna say the downside is, we could say, we could say, look, we've got gold, you know, silvery tops here. I mean, the way around that would be to take this, undo it, turn it round, and push in the drilled side. Now, we're never going to need the, um, let me think these things to his side. Let's see if we can do it. Grab hold of this. See if I can get the gold bit at the top. That's what I'm trying to do. So we're going to put this on. That's still a good thread. Come back round. Try and get it on here. Now it doesn't matter too much if I grip this thread here because it's never going to stick up beyond the top of the bridge the way we've currently got it. So I think I should be able to get away with just the visual gold top sticking out. And this should hold it nicely. So that comes through a little bit and then back off. So it's a tiny bit of grinding on the thing, but in there you can't see it and you do then see the gold top, which is a prettier thing. Right about that. That one, oops, turn it over, wind it down, set it back in. So we cut the thread has already been cut by the um, by the thread on the what's it. So I'm just having a feel of that. That's just short of the. Well, we're going to have. We're going to put um, tape on here, so we're, we're going to be safe. It won't do any damage anyway. And there we are. <coughs> Travel end. <coughs> Excuse me. There we are. Right the way down to the full low stop. Lovely. Um, we could just hand sand that a little bit just to be absolutely sure. But as I say, we'll, we'll make sure that. There's nothing that nothing will stick out from there, it'll be flush. Let's take that out for a second. I don't want to I don't want to, I want to be careful not to reshape the underside of here. But I want to make sure it is flush. That's flush. Lovely. And this is flush only for a bit of sticking that wood. A little bit of burr from the, the wood poking through. Right, there we have our reshaped bridge. And some leftover old bits. Good. Ready to go. So, as you can see, a successful little operation there. Get these bits out of the way for a minute. Right. That can go down there, that can go there. Okay, so next part of the thing is to we'll get ourselves a, an adjustable nut and a base piece. Uh, bases with feet and with bases. Bases, just bases. I've got different size ones. How cool is that? Thanks to um, Gordon. Well, Gordon started with a G and went wrong. Gerard. Gordon. I do a terrible thing <clears throat> sometimes. Cool. I can refer to my friend Malcolm as um, Morris. <clears throat> I don't know why. I just do. So here's the adjustable tusk adjustable nut. Here are some bases. We've got three different heights of base, thanks to Gerard. And I'm going to. Well, these are two different heights I've got here. I'm going to check them now against the guitar and see what works best. So, so here we have, we're back in that lovely place. 
Um, oh, oh no, don't tell me. Please don't tell me. Why did you conk out? <sighs> oh, I could, I could, I could tear my own eyes out. Okay, uh, a little bit of a break there because the camera conked out. And it conked out because I hadn't deleted old videos on the camera, so I ran out of memory, which is so annoying. Anyway, here we are at the place of good fun. Now, this is, we're going to get rid of this nut and we're going to replace it with a decent adjustable tusk nut, which will ensure tuning stability. But we're in a, we're in a scary place because I've been ca caught out by this before. This, removing an old plastic nut like this is scary, and there's not really many ways you can do it. You have to hit it like that to make it come off. And then you have to hopefully get it loose, and if it's good, it will come off like that. Fabulous, right? Now that's how it happens 98 out of 100 times, or 99 out of 100 times. For some reason in the last two or three weeks, it has twice refused to do it that way, and it's taken a chunk of paint with it, splintering some that very brittle finish. Unfortunately, there is absolutely no way around that. So we're going to use, because the Epiphone has a deep nut slot, we're going to use one of Gerard's uh, high bases, which just goes perfectly right from the off. I'm very pleased. Hardly any cleaning up. Maybe just a little bit of blade work there to, to clean that up. Um, I'm just going to, I mean, it's basically just picking up a, a little bit of the glue and Just the sort of shards of super glue coming away there. And it gives us a good footing for the um, the new nut. And that is that is about as good as you could possibly hope for. That's absolutely wonderful. I'm so pleased. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just leave that there for a minute. And we're gonna put the middle strings back on. Well, yeah, into the nut slot. And I'm gonna tighten these up. Right, the idea being just to hold the uh, nut centrally-ish in, in place. I won't stay exactly where I want it to, but and then we'll put on the others. And at this point, I can just gauge whether how high on its feet the nut will need to stand to work the way I want it to work. Um, and that will tell me in turn how much of the scrub screw is going to stick out the top because that's one of the things Andy wanted to make sure that we didn't have any um, grub screw sticking out and getting into the hands and of course we, we won't because this thing already I can see even on the high the high footing it needs um, oh I haven't put the bridge under that's a <laughs> that's a very slight oversight and at this point in time I'm really only thinking about getting the height of the nut. I know where the bridge is going to go roughly. I'm going to worry about the precise placement of that a little bit later. Um, so this bear with me. Reduce the tension. So we've got our, I'm just putting this dumb down here. Treble. Da, 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 da. Right. So at the moment, the first thing I can tell is that if we lower the action, um, the bridge is going to God, these 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 slots are not slots. How strange! How very odd! They aren't going to want to stay there. Huh. That's so weird. They're not slots. They're kind of I don't know what they are. They're like they're slight slots, but they're on the back side, um, and they don't really well. They just about hold it. That's not too bad actually. That's not great. So, so I'm just I'm just getting these strings on for now. Yeah, the pickup's far too far up now, so I need to wind that down. If there's room, I just make sure there is. Down you go, my friend. Of course, you know this is one of the things you have to think of if you're going to successfully reduce your playing action. You will you um, almost certainly going to find that your pickups are too high. Now this one neck one isn't really responding to anything so there's something blocking that one moving at all which i'm going to have to yeah, um, investigate fairly soon if 
if not almost straight away, because I don't actually think I can get this note, this low E playing while that pickup is in the way. Let me just check, I might be able to. I may just be able to cl clear it, only just. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is just get these up, uh, tighten up a bit. The nut is obviously wandering about from side to side, that's not a problem. I'm just going to just going to load these strings and I'm sort of aiming just to I've, I probably ought to glue this because while it does move around it is going to make it a bit difficult. Uh, what I noticed straight away is that the way this neck and body geometry is working the nut is actually telling us a little bit it's telling us that it kind of wants to sit to the base side a little bit but that could be it could be more the tension at the moment than anything else. Let's see if we can correct that and balance it a bit more. Yeah, let's see if we can hold it there. Okay, so I'm just getting... God, it doesn't want to sit in that slot. So those slots, first and foremost, aren't actually very good slots. So we're going to have to do... Sorry, we're going to have to do something to deepen those. Uh, but in terms of positioning right now, that's okay for where it can be. Um, now what I can see is that strings, some of them are barely over the first fret, which is okay. I like to start with the strings on the first fret, or at least buzzing on it, which is quite good. Because then what I'll do is I will um, raise it up. But actually, you know what I'm not? I'm going to do something first. So I can tell straight away that I could do with losing a bit of the height, a tiny bit, and that will also concur, or go hand in hand with something else I want to do, which is to round off the bottom of these grub screws before I stand them onto the 3D printed plastic. Okay, I mean they're standing on it now, but before I turn them and tighten them. So let me just take these this out. And I think also, for the sake of this, I think we might as well. Uh, I'm, I'm happy with this. This is very flush. That's a really good fit. I haven't actually had that good a fit before. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to commit this to the um, slot with a little bit of glue. But only a small bit. I said only a small bit. Thank you of course, when you put something on like this, you don't have the world's most time to get it right, naturally. So we get it on and flush in one go, and that's where it's going to stay. <sighs> Unless it slides sideways just like that. How bizarre. So get on there. Stay on there, please. Thank you. Now... You could put the strings on. The only thing about putting the strings on right now is that they would tend to pull it sideways. Um, so I'll let it um, set first. Then we're going to get the, the little wind in these. Now what was I going to do? I was going to try and pull these off without... Oh, it's, telling, it's taking up the whole thing. <laughs> so much for my gluing it into place. Right, let's pop this off, so at least I got a chance of getting it off in a minute. Put it back on there. This will s dry in a minute. Probably at this point, if I'm just being sensible, I think I would put the two middle strings on and tighten them up right now. Equal amount on either side. Um, hopefully we'll just get this balanced up. Where's that going? Why is that not tightening up? It's wandering off sideways. Just want to hold that in place while it dries, please, if I may. Okay, that's flush. Uh, I'm going to leave that there for an, for a minute. 
I think what I'm going to do is make a cup of tea, leave that nut set, and then um, I'll just come back and do the sanding bit afterwards. See you, see you in a minute. Right, I hope this is running. I hope we are good. I've got a cup of tea brewing over there. What I've done, meantime, is I have glued in the thing. I have flattened down the thingies, and we'll... We may flatten them down more if I need to, but I won't do it just yet. I've also sorted out this pickup, which was jammed on the edge of the hole for some reason, so now it can move and be raised and lowered so we're clear of the strings. And down here we've got a bit of material, so I can move this around and then mark where I want the bridge to be to start off with. So um, good that the saddles are all in a straight line. Uh, stay on there, please, for a minute. Um, so we'll have to do that by mixture of ear or tuning thing, but I'll come to that in a minute. So, um, that's all good. So, um, let's do the first thing. I don't know where this this camera got lost at some point, but what's this telling me? Sorry, these notifications drive me mad. Right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just raise this up till we get to the ideal first fret height. And that appears that the saddles, the grub screws now, are below the surface, which is great. That's how we want them. Okay, now we've got this in the sort of roughly in the way we want it to be. Now, at this point, um, I've put green tape on this thing down the other end here because um, I want to be able to tune it up, um, get a... Uh, get a uh, find the, the intonation position and then work the bridge position out from there now we've got really low action now so we have the ability to come upwards obviously from this bridge um, now if we want wow that's super duper low now it's going to be hard to raise this action wise Um, so it might be a smart idea, I'm just going to stir my tea, might be a smart idea at this point to, um, before I tighten everything up, is to go up about a millimetre on that bridge. Um, as I said, I'd, I'd much prefer to have the room to raise it and lower it. Um, because don't forget, if this changes shape in the future, then you still want to lower it a little bit. So I'm going to slack off the outside again. Um, there's a bit of toing and froing here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up by locating the bridge. The nut is good. I'm going to end up locating the bridge. Um, I'll pin it down or mark it up for the time being. Um, and I'll mark its position. And then I will, um, and then we'll stick it down after that. So I'm not really, I'm just sort of I'm just getting it roughly to the right place for now. So let's go up. How shall we do it? Let's go up to about there. This is a guesstimate, I'm afraid. Start there. Put it back under. Now, again, it's going to be a little difficult to move around, but we'll get there. The, these, these slots are so feeble that they don't actually stay in the slots until they've got some pressure uh, pulling down on them so that's the first thing the, the actual side to side position of the bridge will be dictated by um, how the strings sit along the neck so even if uh, even if it's a slightly different side to side position than it was before that's fine because we're going to take it from where we want it not where it was before in fact oh, why is it always the way <sighs> Every single time I come to do a setup, that happens. And that happens because it's worn, it's worn out at that point. Right, so that's now going to cost a set of strings. Because <sighs> I don't think I've ever got a single one that will do the job. So here comes a set of Hardy Benton. <laughs> Tens. Come on. Oh my god. Sorry about this. I'm trying to find 
tens in my spares box. And I've got probably one, two sets of tens left. But each time I use just a ten out of this, just for the setup, it's a, it's a waste of a whole set, really. Um, but that's the way it goes. Thankfully, they're only a quid something a set. But you end up with thousands of E's and B's and G's and stuff. Anyway, I right. can't really see my way through here yet. How does that work? Are you kidding me? Is that how it goes in? Lift it up, push it in, grab it. Right. Will it stay in? Yeah. Hopefully. Okay. So this only needs to last long enough to do the setup part of things. Sorry, you're just you're staring at the headstock shot. It's not very interesting. The, uh, what was I doing before I so rudely interrupted myself? So I moved this over. So the funny part is with this guitar you have to tighten everything almost to pitch in order to keep the strings in the slots. Because um, won't, they won't stay if you don't. And once you've got some tension on it then you can get the tuning fork out then we should be able to get it up to pitch, then we should be able to position the bridge. Oh, thank you. Sideways, doesn't like it. Okay, so let's set the camera up. So straight away, you can see that we've got the bridge floating, the new bridge on. We've got a nice low action where we've actually now got some up and down movement available to us. We've got a lovely low um, first fret action, um, which we can tweak even more uh, from the adjustable nut. And you know, we've got the removed, that's plastic. They'll um, they may call it new bone, I don't know what that is, but um, it's clear that there were some tuning issues, hence the amount of um, graphite in there. And you can also see that the neck pickup now is down at the right height. So the next stage of this really is to concentrate now on moving the bridge around and doing some markings. So the challenge I've got is to uh, add a bit of extended thing on here, because if I'm going to mark this up I need to be able to extend the line out so I can follow it again in a minute to mark where the bridge needs to be. So that gives me a, a bit of room. Now I can do it by uh, ear. That's flat, so that tells me it's too long. So, so the interesting thing is, is if you put the bridge in slanted, um, then uh, you're sort of doing the work of the saddles, but it gives you more adjustment room. If you put it in square, then you, you're kind of forcing the saddles, the individual saddles, to do all the work. But, you know, some, sometimes it's, a usually, well, it's usually a little bit of both. So you tend to find there's a bit of a slant and you have then some individual in adjustment available to you. So that says it's too long, um, too long a, just as a quick, quick. Okay, that's more like it. Right, we don't necessarily take the word of my ears for it. My ears don't have words, but you know what I mean. So if we were to just plug this in a second. There's another little detail on here that Andy asked me to look at, and that is this, um, this selector switch has a, a rubber bung um, kind of 
to save it from stressing the wood, I think. Um, and it's a good idea, only it kind of leaves the whole thing a bit sort of spongy. Um, now, I'm not sure that an ideal alternative would be to um, would be to go to the, you know, remove it altogether. And I think it's in, in respect to the fact this is a thin top. And if you if you fit a switch in there that gets a lot of movement and abuse um, in a thin top, it's liable to split it. I think that's the reason for the rubber bung. See, we're practically, practically there. Um, a little bit difficult to handle this because the thing's sticking out the bottom. So. That was a bit sharp. Something wrong with this string. It's probably going to break in a minute now. Yeah, it's going to break. <sighs> uh, hmm. I think it's unwinding, basically. I think that's what we can say. Let's try again. Oh, we've done that one. It's a G that's unwinding. Oh. Now the uh, B is registering as sharp. If I can get the G to work. Okay, so what what that's showing me is that um, that's off its rocker, and that's off its rocker. That's probably why. <sighs> Let's try it again. That's running a little bit sharp. Um, that means too short, and needs to go back a bit. Uh, so I'm just what I'm doing is I'm just putting a bit more of a tilt on it and putting it to one side. Let's see if we can get as close as we can without doing any um, adjustments on the individual saddles first. pretty much on. Um, now that's interesting because it looks highly angled and you might say well uh, you know why 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 wouldn't you you know why wouldn't you put it straight and, and use the individual saddles well if you put it on angled and it's almost spot on there then you means by definition you've got more adjustment room um, available to you rather than putting it in line for one of them and then forcing all the other ones back so I'm going to go with that because I like how straight that is, or how close that is, and then we can go from there and make any individual adjustments from that point onwards. Um, so all I'm really 
bothered about at this stage is the straight line position. So I have to make, I've got to get, extend these lines here, um, which I'll do with uh, a ruler. I've got to extend these lines off past the extent of this bridge, um, if I can draw them, and then I can connect them up and position the bridge back on the actual thing. Now, of course, to do this, it, it sort of means the next thing I have to do is I have to take all of this off to do the fret leveling or and then I have to go through the hassle of, of um, retightening everything up so I think since we're at this point here I know what I've got to do to position and mark and position the bridge I think what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to uh, prep the frets for leveling which means I'm going to um, check the relief on the neck first which is very flat but there's still some relief I think under tension we can uh, we can safely say that these slots are not going to these notches are not going to hold this um, the strings. So that's a bit of an absolute pain. So I'm going to have to uh, I'm going to have to slightly enlarge the notches. Um, this isn't this is a go-to. This is not a cheap bridge. Shouldn't really be wanting to have to do this. So. Here we are, first things first. I'm going to just slightly adjust this and I'm going to just open it up a little bit so it will hold that string in place. Can't afford to have it firing off sideways. I'm going to need to do the same for the other ones too. So it's just a, um, a little, and then we're gonna. I'm gonna need to um, sandpaper them out a little bit too. So, <sighs> okay. Now, in doing this, you also then have to be careful that you are not massively changing the uh, radius spread of the, st of the strings. <laughs> you don't want to make massively deep notches so the strings sit up and down as they go over in that radius curve. It's not scientific. Uh, you could tweak it repeatedly um, with radius guy, uh, gauges if you want to. I think that probably still needs a little bit too. Um, but I'm doing about the same amount for each one just to improve the hold. The problem is that the notches on these don't reach up to the actual apex. They only run up the back and stop, which actually then isn't enough to hold the string in place, which is pretty silly. So that's me just having helped it along a little bit there. Okay, so now... So that at least plays and the strings aren't popping out of the notches. cleanly that's tuning up. is moving yeah okay that's fine we'll just tack that down I know where the right position is now okay that's really good uh, funnily enough for a, such a low action that's playing surprisingly well so we've we've got a really radically different action it's too low actually it's less oh no it's 1.5 that's that's right on the mark so that means I can now uh, mark the fingerboard ready to fret level because I'm one of I want to fret level so that I get this playing as beautifully as it would can with this new low action. And don't forget, we've got about another millimeter down. We could go, should the um, should the geometry of the guitar change 
in the coming years. Now, if you remember, the, you might think, well, why, why is, why have I had to, why have I had to um, sand two and a half millimeters, or two and a quarter millimeters, or something off this bridge? Sorry, not two and a half, but four, four point two five millimeters. Why have I had to sand all that off? You know, it, it's clearly the bridge can't go low enough to make this guitar play with the right, a decent action. So there's, you've got to ask yourself, what has changed? Um, what can possibly have changed? And the only thing that can change over the time is the geometry of, of how the neck fits into the body. And just like an acoustic guitar, that's what happens with a, with a uh, jazz hollow guitar like this, is that the neck is under the same loading stress. Uh, and the box shape of the guitar tends to slowly deform over time and as a result, what started out at the factory as a, an adjustable bridge that could give you, you know, um, could allow, allow you straight out off the shelf to go down to a very low action, although you'd probably find that the frets wouldn't be level enough to allow you to, but at least you could set it, um, you know, 20 years later or however, however old this is, you suddenly find that it just literally cannot go anywhere near low enough to give you a playable action. And so something has changed, and what has changed is the neck body geometry. The neck is ultimately squeezing into the body, and the whole neck and body is deforming. But it's not rapid, it's just very slow and steady. So I'm, at this point, I'm going to level, um, and I'm going to, once I've leveled, then I will stop. Um, no, I'm going to try and drink some tea without slurping, it's hard to do really. I could take this off and put it down over here so you don't have to listen to me drinking my tea. Huh. I'm really thirsty because it's been <coughs> a hot afternoon. Fabulous. Wonder bar. Okay, I'm just going to try and put this back on. Bit of funny. I don't quite understand how they fit these, but they seem to work. Okay, so all is good. So I'm going to now do the usual fret leveling routine, thankfully. Good routine operation. Um, don't anticipate any problems with this at all. The frets have enough life in them to, to be leveled. Um, the, it's a rosewood fingerboard, so there's no real issue about masking it off. So I can get, I can get the full polish routine going. Excuse me. Unlike, um, you know, with the both. Well, um, unlike with with the uh, Andy Squire um, jazz bass, which uh, couldn't do that with because the finish was is old and it has it's starting to look like it's going to come come apart and the last thing you want to do is put on masking tape and give it any other reason to come off because um, the, the finish when it's that old just will will sp split and come off and then you're in a whole different strategy after that or you know you're going down a different journey so i'm just having a look uh, pretty good actually everything is cutting just a little bit except there's some a couple of low frets right at the end here and that could be that somebody in a, another luthier shop in the past has deliberately put a uh, what they call a fall away on this guitar um, and, you know it's a technique that people do um, I've not felt the need to do it because of the method that I use has hasn't required it but um, other people do, and that's what they do. Fab. Man, that is so low. That's amazing. One of the things about this guitar that I'm not a fan of, um, I'll tell you now, and I can feel it, you, you can't feel it, you can probably see it, is because of the spread of the headstock, the pressure on those strings going through that nut sideways pressure is quite a lot um, and that's the that's the thing that Gibson you know as we all know kind of got wrong from the outset 
you know, um, actually Gibson aren't even the worst culprits in this. Uh, Gretsch make their headstock even wider than Gibson in terms of how far apart the, the um, tuna pegs are spaced. And as a result, the, the sideways pressure on the, on the nut is phenomenal. I'm impressed, that's very good. I'm very happy. I'm very pleased. Good, good. So, I'll just run on through these six string tracks, as I call them, and then we'll be into masking off um, and then polishing out, and then obviously cleaning up. The fingerboard's got a lot of ancient grime on it, so I'm going to um, give it a good clean up with naphtha, um, re-oil it before we restring, but also while the strings are off and once I've fitted the bridge then I'm going to give the whole of the body a sort of spring clean with the scratch remover. Um, yeah, a couple of low frets down here but that's fine, that's where you want them. If at all, you want them right at the end. Yeah, so polish out, so get rid of all the sort of watermarks and grub, grubby stuff. Wow, <laughs> this is incredible. But you know, you can see that, that this action was rescued entirely by making that m major adjustment to the neck. Um, there's no way around it. You have to do that to make the thing play the way you want it. Um, and the good thing is, you know, it, as long as you're confident of what you're doing, you can make such a big adjustment to the bridge um, because you know you know that you've still got brake angle at the end there. It, the, the strings will stay in the slots if you make that small notch adjustment. And don't forget, I will also sand those out and make sure that there's no sharp edges. You know, so you can do quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of work to free up a, a completely different action. Um, which, uh, which is uh, which is good. So I'm nearly done on these, just the A and the E to go. But it is a, it's a beautifully low action now. And you know, so, so the the choice of um, the slant on the bridge is just a purely pragmatic one to give each string the same, or oh, sorry, each saddle the same range of adjustment room. Um, if you if you do it straight, then you sort of you will kind of push you'll push yourself to make more or less. Well, you, you'd have to you have to make your um, your D and your G sort of somewhere between the the center point of the in intonation range, and then you have to allow the you make the um, the individual saddles do all the work. And I think that since since we know we're working with a slant anyway, let's let's start with the slant and then let's use the um, individual saddles just to do the fine fine tuning. Um, and that seems to be uh, seems to me a smarter way to do it. And it gives you the biggest possible range of adjustment. That's what I'm saying. Um, in fact, you look at just about any Les Paul. I think they're almost all slanted one way or another even when they technically don't have to be because you could do all the, all the adjustment room with or the adjustment work with the saddles they still put them on slanted I what I'll also do once I've just finished this bit is I'll go and get me washing up bucket so I can wash my hands throughout the remainder of this setup there we go just test play these, make sure there are no un un unexpected things. Brilliant, that's great. 
Thank you for being a helpful and cooperative guitar. For a change. Right. So, I like the position there. Um, what I, what I, what I, what I think. I'm gonna, mm, right. So when it comes to placing it back down, that's exactly where it wants to be. So, I have to do two things. I have to extend this line. See, that's, even that's moved very slightly. I have to extend this line onto both of those, but I have to register the end mark of this one, which is there and there. Um, so I really need to split that one. So I need to stick short. I need to stick about uh, 10 millimeters short at the end. That's where my sticky tape will go. Ah, that's interesting. Oh, yeah, well. See, they've done that the opposite way around now. I'm looking to find. That's why that looks more extreme. That's the way it should be. They've got it wrong. I'm happy with that. Okay, so I've got to take the strings off, bin them, take this off, extend the lines, prepare that for sticking, remove the tape, make sure I know where my outside edge mark is, and it's that one. Get rid of those, place it on there with the instep. Right, okay. See how many things you've got to think of? Now, a little word of warning. When you're undoing the strings on a guitar with the adjustable nut, do the slack off the outside strings first and work your way inwards, leaving the two center ones on. And all that means is you avoid flipping the adjustable nut part, uh, which can, if you if you work it to the outside and take the, leave the, you know, um, take the outside string off last, it can flip the nut off. Flip it off. But, right, there we are. There we are. I'm going to just cut these because I think these strings have had their day. Thank you. Thank you, I thank you, I thank you. Right. Ah, uh, not really what I wanted to have happen. All of that just come apart like that. Bye. Right. Off with that one. Off with this one. Off with this one. I think what I might do is also take the <coughs> take the tuners off so I can give the headstock a, a thorough clean as well, um, which is never really that easy to do without taking the uh, tuners out. So it gives us a chance to give it a good clean up. A thorough clean up. Okay, right, so first of all, uh, just while I'm here, before I take the camera off break, I'm going to extend these lines. It's interesting, I noticed by the way they'd set the saddles um, that they expected this guitar, that the manufacturer is expecting the this bridge to be put on with the screws facing backwards, which is sort of an easier way to do it in the sense that often it gives you more easy, easier access to the... Um, uh, to, the, the sound, um, to the screws to make intonation adjustments, but it's, but it's, it's actually a, not a most common way because a lot of people uh, get freaked out if you do it that way because they think the traditional way is the other way. Anyway, so so at this point I'm just gonna I'm gonna cut I'm cut I'm gonna tear this with my accurate hands like that so I can get the bridge back on and I can use shit I've just gone taking the wrong one off oh. God, I can't believe it 
That's the brain off. Look at that. I've just taken off the the one that marked the position. Oh well, it's not the end of the world. It's just annoying. I just wasted my time. Okay, fine. What I was hoping to do is not have to go through that so much of that process again, but wham wham wham. Right, what I think I might do, we're gonna go we're gonna go screws forward because that's the conventional way. And I'm going to I'm gonna make this a little bit more conventional uh, which they haven't done. Okay, we're gonna go short, longer, longer. Shorter. Longer, longer. And we'll start with a, a more familiar pattern in it compared to what we had had before. Okay, that's more like it. And then we'll still have it on a tilt, which is fine too. It just means I have to remark it. Of course, these little stupid things start to move. That's no good, is it? Come on. Forwards, 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 forwards. Forwards, backwards, backwards, backwards. That's good. All right, well, pff, we know which end is which now. Um, I mean, I can, I can see where it's, I can see the starting line. I could, I could re, re-tweak it. I mean, redraw it just based off that, actually. It's a little bit, basically, I've set it up a little bit more, um, tilted than the original um, but actually I could I can recover it from thankfully from the one end like this I can use this straight line stay together that's that's, uh, that's widened out so that's no good the trouble is I can't get in with this ruler to the right place because it's bending more like that All right, that's it yep Good. Sorted that out. Right, so that's ready to go. Sand those, clean all this up, mark these off, take the tuners off in a minute, um, recrown these, clean up the board, masking tape it all off, polish it all out. Um, the job's done. I'm going to go off cam to do the polishing out, probably because my batteries are more than likely going to wear out. I've still got going here, that's not bad. So. There's our level nut with the level grub screws, so that's all in order. Take these off to give that a good polish up. You see all this, I don't know if you can see all these watermarks and it's like a grimy bit. There you go, all that, that'll come off nicely with uh, going over with um, that scratch remover. There's a the bikini line. Um, we're just going a tiny bit more slanted than that this time. Um, these obviously come off and move around so I'll take them off for now so we can clean up around um, I might look at uh, it's not really we, we could the problem with tightening this is you can't really tighten this one without getting a hold of the underside or the back and it's actually quite difficult to do um, anyway right let's just do the the uh, crowning bit before we turn the camera off Recrowning, so we have the Stumac diamond offset crowning file, along with a wire, a wire brush to clean out the things. The, I would call these medium medium jumbo frets, so I'm going to use that side of the thing. And basically, I'm just going to go over the frets to take off any flat spots and 
restore the uh, frets to a more arch shape which makes them play better and restores their correct intonation point at the top of the, the arch as opposed to on the front edge of any flat spot. That's why we do it. Um, there is a little bit of fret wear on these but some of it will have been cleaned up in the levelling process. Um, I don't know if you noticed from earlier videos but I've, I've in the last few weeks I've added a an extra 600 grit stage into the sanding process. So do four bits of 600 instead of two um, because I was noticing a small amount of 400 grit um, sanding marks left at the end um, even when the frets were fully shined out you could just still see traces of these little marks so um, it occurred to me that really it could only be the 400 grit marks still hanging around in there so I thought I'd um, add a bit of 600 to take care of it okay so not too bad I like this guitar. I've never had one like this, but I would be happy to have this on my wall. It's a nice beast. And I think, it, you know, whether, whether it really plays a, a tone ultimately that much different from some of the other nice double humbucker guitars I've got isn't really the thing. It has an acoustic tone on its own, which is quite nice to strum and play when you're in the house. But it also sort of puts you in the in the jazzy mood sort of thing, you know. And you can't you can't hide the fact that there is a degree of that going on, you know, when when we pick up one kind of guitar over another. Yeah, I do like the I like the fact that it's got a, an acoustic tone on its own. Um, like the, a couple of years ago, a few years ago now, I did, I did some, rescued some very old uh, Antoria foreign issue um, acoustic, um, what do you call them, oh, arch tops, um, you know, that, that just been sort of written off and people are throwing away. And um, I... I really enjoyed restoring them as much as I could. Uh, let me have a think now. So I think I think I don't really I won't really do anything. Um, I won't do the polishing bit until I've done the frets. So I think the next stage will be the uh, masking off, doing the frets. Then everything gets a bit dusty. Then we'll take the tuners off. Then I will mount the bridge on here. And then I'll clean around it. And the reason I mount the bridge on there because if I do the cleaning first, then I'll lose these marker marks, if you get what I mean. So I'll put the bridge on and work around it. Um, so next bit of stuff is boring and long-winded, so I shall switch things off. I probably ought to put the um, put the uh, that phone iPhone on charge for a bit and um, come back when that's done. I mean, I'm kind of ahead of the game, really. I was sort of planning to do this over two evenings, two days or two evenings, or whatever. Um, so, uh, you know, it could be that I come back to it tomorrow, um, see how I feel, could finish it tonight. So you know, all I'm doing here is just preparing the fretboard to polish out the frets and pr protect the fretboard. Um, the, the finish on this is good. I have no, I've no fear of it coming off with this low-tack masking tape down the side, so I'm quite quite comfortable to put it on here. But you kind of get to know which guitars, um, when the finish is starting to lose its grip. And part, that's partly, as I've said before, that some of it didn't have its grip in the first place, so, um, you know, nothing you can do about that. Um, let me just think. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Before I do that, let's do one last little thing. Let's get this little cloth. Let's just clean up under the footprint of the 
of the bridge and then we'll stick the bridge down once and for all. Well, <coughs> I can do with some more of this stuff. So just gonna, it's like a, it's a sort of magic, magic scratch removery stuff, but it just, it does a great job in lifting baked on grime, I suppose you'd call it. Um, you know, if you've got major scratches, it won't lift them, but it'll lift off watermarks. So there's some scratches where this bridge has been moved around in the past, which it won't get rid of, but it's, uh, it's, it's worked around it, so I'll be able to um, stick it down now. So what I'll do is I'll get, I'll get me a cutting device, which will be there. Get me a blade, which will be here. Get me the bridge. And I'm going to cut me some, cut me some slag tape. And I'm going to cut a straight line as possible. A thin strip. Keep that one to the side. Lift that one up. Oh, it's done the thing I don't want it to do. It's stuck to the bleeding surface. Right, we don't need to begin with that. So, it's kind of difficult to manage. It's really good stuff, but you don't want to start with it doubled over. What I also don't want is I don't want it sticking out the edge. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to do this. I'm going to cut inside. And I don't care if I score onto the wood, because that's not a problem, because it's hidden. But it gives me the thing inside the footprint, which is what I wanted. And I can actually do the same here, which not only does it cover... The, um, it covers the foot that we wanted to, the little metal foot coming through. So we've got that covered up. And then I can cut this back along here. It's not the same thickness, but it's, it's two sort of enclosed hidden bits. So now what I want to do is get this in my mind, get it up to this end here, over to that end there, and... Um, ah, <laughs> right, my thing is I, it's critical, damn, see the, the critical bit here in this deal is the side to side bit, um, and we have to be dead on it, uh, tell you what, let's, shall we, shall we, leave it so we leave committing it to when we've got the strings going back on because that way we can be absolutely dead certain i'll take most of it off leaving only the guide for the position and then we'll we'll work around it for the cleaning and then we will use the strings because i lost the mark my mark was on this end um my side to side mark and I'm just nervous that I don't even want a millimeter half a millimeter difference I want to stick it down exactly when I see the uh, the strings in line but the problem with that is you you still have to mark it somehow because you, you've got no way of pulling the if, if you hover you you may just be able to move it to the side and then press it down if you take the cover off first but it's very difficult anyway we'll figure it out um Right, so I will I will continue covering this up, but I also will take off the tuners as well. So we get a good good clean up. It's a nice way of making the headstock look and feel brand new. These will be um, I put these in the, in the order they go back visually and we undo the tuner screws on the other side and that is the right thing but it's too short too many of these screwdrivers uh, don't have long enough reach to get into these um, past the, the tuner bodies to get these things undone. So 
That one's there. That one's there. Oh, falling forward. <laughs> Yeah, so my little trip down today, I had to go down to my pal Rod's place because um, I'd uh, I'd left a piece of ecchi down there, uh, and a customer of mine called Beach wants me to make another trekkie guitar, which requires the ecchi, um, and I had three ready-cut pieces to make three-piece ecchi top exactly in the right size for a trekkie guitar which is what I need to make um, so I knew I had the two pieces and I am pretty certain the third piece I'd taken down to Rod's workshop and left down there um, and I'm it's pretty much the very last of all my uh, ecchi re recycled ecchi from the power station um, you know And uh, and that for me that's um that special timber. So uh, yeah, I, I was kind of banking very much banking on finding that piece. Um, so I went over rods earlier on, and thankfully we found it. Um, so now I've got the three pieces I need. So the that guitar is going to have a, a I was going to say a pancake. Yeah, that's pancake base made from two 18 millimeter thick single pieces, um, one on top of the other. So it's not not you know it's not like a two piece blank or anything. So single two times single pieces, one on top of the other, and a pancake made of vintage uh, 150 plus year old. Um, God, yeah, about 150 year old uh, mahogany. And um, and then on top, it's going to have the three-piece ecchi top, um, and that then will that will be the the carving the carved part. So about 13 millimeters of carved depth, but I'm I'm going to make it a little bit shallower than the previous ones. I, I'm not that keen on the you know the extreme German classical carved thing that people talk about. Uh, I think I'd prefer to stick with a smoother one. Um, and actually my my number one Trekkie, the prototype, was a, a softer, a less pronounced carve. And actually I think I like it better than some of the more recent ones that I think end up looking a little bit too much like, too much like Cornish pasties, you know, the way they curl over at the ends. So anyway. So it's, uh, it's sort of nerve-wracking in some ways because these three pieces are the only three good bits I've got left and I've got this commission is already agreed and paid so I've got to make it work, which is, I'm sure it's fine, I will. But, um, you know, when you, when you haven't got any room for error, it always increases the, um, the pressure a little bit. Okay, so this is all the usual boring stuff of masking things off so I'm going to turn off the cameras recharge the iPhone and see you in a minute okay all right we're back after all the a lot of things um just I've cleaned the whole guitar um I've repositioned well not but I positioned the bridge so I know where I want it because now I need to take the strings off not strings I just need to move the strings and then I'm going to going to um, move the strings out of the way and then I'm going to stick the bridge down and put and then we'll put the strings back on so um, I just use them to line it up um, but what I really need is a clear run at the uh, at this area here with the sticky things um, so I've, I've gone and repositioned or remarked up using uh, the tape to, to def 
define the outline as clearly as possible. So if I just can get these out of the way, in fact, I probably could even take that off there like that just to make my life easier in both cases. There we go. Um, so now what I want to do is this, take off the sticky stuff. I hope you can see. Now take off the cover. So we've got our holding it in place tape. And then we use this to mark it exactly down where it falls, uh, which is exactly there. And that's it. No more attempts. <laughs> we press it down, we do it, and that's your lot. Lovely. Okay, good. Um, and now I'll just give that a little clear, clear, clean. A little rub down here. Clean that up where this end of the bridge comes to. And a bit at that end too. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, so um, let's try and get these three back. Oops, lost one of them in the process. Let's try and get these three on and back in place. Let's get them tightened up a bit. Uh, I've oiled the board and everything, so we're just really ready to go now. Ready to rock. And a couple more strings to put on and that should be good. We're on. Um, right, now where did I go? Oh yes, one of these. That's the high E. High E goes over there. High E. Thank you. Uh, this is the G. <laughs> okay. So pretty much all there very pleased to say um, which is good having done it in one day rather than two I've got myself back some time to take care of another setup that's come in before we get to the weekend because this weekend we have some family coming down into the area so and haven't seen them for a long time due to COVID and whatnot so it'd be really nice to have a bit of family time so especially the weather's going to be nice so surely it's time for a oh, barbecue or something decent like that so this bit this is really fiddly get in there thank you the other thing with the um these long trapezoid trapezoid things tail pieces plus the long Epiphone headstock is you almost ran out of string for winding these on uh, on the the, um, the D and the G well the G's okay the D's a little short of length because it's on the short arm if you get what I mean so we've only got a little bit hanging over on that one okay let's tighten these up ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Ooh, we are in place. Positioning is great, just where I want it. Woohoo! Woohoo! Right, first of all, I'm going to cut off all the spare extra bits so they don't hurt anyone. Rid of those. Oh, come on. Thank you. Right, so they can go in the bin. Right, right, right. So I'm just going to just pull this a little bit. You can see the, the oil that I've put on there freshen up the rosewood.
Oh, before I tighten up, I'm just going to do that little bit of very careful bit of sanding uh, before I tighten the strings up. Now, to do that, I'm going to use a very fine. Mm, Am I going to use that? No. Where's it gone? Where's the one gone? That, uh, there it is. So I'm going to get a bit of 400 grit. 400 grit. And I'm going to wrap it around this tool that I used to make the notches pretty much in the first place. Um, and I'm going to double it up. And I'm going to just put it in like this. And I'm going to, in fact, actually I might double this stuff up and just use a blade. This is another way of doing it because by the time we've doubled it up it's quite thick so the blade just gives it a little bit of strength and then I'm going to go in there like this and just soften out that like that and I'm just going to do it to all of them so it takes any sharp edges away hardly will hardly adjust the height or anything it's a very it's a fairly small Ga grain gauge grit, <laughs> gauge gauge grit. It's just enough to smooth it out a little bit. Hey, <laughs> voila! Right, now up to tune. Still got the truss rod cover to replace. Oh yes, we are almost there. A little bit of fingerprints. This was the way. Beautiful finish. Always. You can never get rid of the fingerprints. They always return. Everything's looking good. Um, I don't think we can do anything with this. I think this is designed for you not to hit it hard. We could try and stick down a little bit of. Put a bit, a little bit of sticky tape under there as that's the only thing I can think of doing and I'm going to try it now and if we don't if it doesn't work then at least we've tried so uh, I'm going to make a little a little slice of tape with the idea of it going underneath that rubber edge there but it's a bit of a it's a bit of a an ask really um, So I think how big has it got to be? It's got to be pretty small, like that, and pretty small, I mean, like this, if at all. And actually, yeah, <laughs> I don't even think I can get. Yeah. How the hell would I get that under there successfully? I am. I'm just sort of thinking aloud a bit because I'm not even really sure this would be feasible. So we could. So we, we don't even have that far, do we? Let's try it under there. No. Nope. No. Even if we got a bit under there, it would get stuck more than likely. Um, I don't want to. You don't want to glue it. You can't really tighten that up because it'll. There's a risk that it'll turn the thing around. I mean, I can try the very smallest amount of tightening. If it tightens without turning it, we'll be all right. But I'm not entirely convinced that it would. Yeah, actually, that's not. That's not so bad. <laughs> it's still trying to come up because that's a, that's a very 
rubbery thing. No, it's st still sort of by default it's going to come out whichever way you push the whole switch. Uh, really, I don't think, I, I don't realistically think there's an amount you can do it up that's going to stop it. I mean, no, it's still going to want to do it, no matter how, how tight you do it. Uh, because it's been held in, that's been held in place. So I don't think though, I don't think we can, we can really change it. I don't think I can get, realistically get a piece of tape under there that's going to hold it. Um, I also, I, I can't, I couldn't get a piece of tape under there that I could pull away. Um, it, it would just become a blob. Um, unless I could, unless I could undo all this and take that off and stick some stuff down, but then I've got the problem after that. <sighs> if if I take this off and I can't, I lose this. Um, then what happens is I end up with this falling in. Um, I suppose. Let me just try. Go on. Just try one thing. <laughs> Try one thing. One thing. Let's try one thing, shall we? While we're running, while there's still time, because we're pretty much done, but we'll give it a go. 12 minutes 47. The only thing we've got to do at the moment is um, check the intonation and carry on stretching out the strings. But apart from that, let's try the one thing. Let's try and hold on to this thing. See, the problem is, I'm not going to be able to hold this while I get that ring off, but we need to get that ring off to, uh, to be able to lift the thing up. If it drops in, I'll be in a world of pain, as they say. Um, so it's still attached there. If I, now that's, that's done up. Somebody's glued that so it can't fall through. I think that's part of it. Right, that's... Let's try something else while we're here. Let's hold on to this. Let's assume it's going to want to try and fall through. Right, let's hold on to... Let's lift this up. Come on, out of the way, thank you. Whilst holding on to this, thank you. Let's see how far up we can lift this. Can we lift this up now, or is this going to... See, that will go down through there if I don't be careful. The question is, let's, um, oh, don't drop through, you little devil. All right, let's just lock it off here. I'm trying to think of a. I've got if I've got some sort of wire that I can hang on to this a bit more carefully. I want to get some wire around there that's thinner. Uh, Oh, I know. Look, what about one of these guitar strings that I'm never going to use? <laughs> From an infinite number of sets of sacrificed guitar strings. Do you think we can do it? All the while, hanging on to this. but it probably will if I'm careful come on you if I'm careful it'll pro probably allow me to drop that through there if 
for the time being and it will let me bring it back up and the question is once that's in there will this comfortably come out or is that is that doomed is that like pushed in forever because if it is it will always unless I can hoik out this grommet and put some sticky underneath its edge then it's never going to stay any better than that but in a way I have to be really I have to take this risk now of being clear of <laughs> getting clear of this to try and pull it out there we go aha hello there okay so the edge of this is tiny thank you so, you hang on there so we have the grommet the Wallace and the grommet so you could see if I could just well there's such a tiny I could, if I could get a little thin line of double side sticky get that back down then we you know we could sort of make it work but the problem is obviously this is a bit difficult to attach anything sticky to and on top of that it's round so how the devil's thingy will actually be able to do it is anyone's guess it's amazing how much that bends and lifts up it may well be that getting a piece of sticky on there isn't going to in any way protect it or save it from moving around anyway so let's just see if it's even feasible because we just could be wasting time so let's get a few bits of sticky and see how in heaven's name so we've got to cut a curve first so we do this on a bit of wood or a bit of plastic let's do it on a bit of plastic So let's say we've got to get a curve. We don't know what that curve is. Let's imagine we know what that curve is. I'm just guessing. No, it's tighter than that, isn't it? Right. Let's try and let's try and get a curve that's similar to that as a start point. Small thing, round thing, small thing, round thing, round thing, small thing. There's never any small round things around when you need them. Kicking around. Um, Wow, look at that sunlight. How nice for a change. Okay, what about one of these little pots? What about this one? Ow. Uh, how close is that? Ooh, you know what? That's nearly the right curve. Ooh. Let's try. So we put that there. Uh, let's try this. I get that. Oh, I see that's picking up grime already. So we put that on there like that. Wow! Look at that. We've got a bit of a bit of stickiness going on there, sticking onto there. Then we have to then somehow cut this next bit off. How the heck am I going to do that? So <laughs> it's difficult because there's nothing now to cut this off against. <sighs> I don't suppose a sharp blade is going to do it, is it? No. I think this is a bit of a non-starter, I have to say. If I take that off, it just becomes a sticky mass. I can try and cut it off leaning against something, but it's... No. It's a no-go, I think. We're wasting time. It's a good try, but there's not enough of an overhang, really. It would work with some glue. Or... Oh some lock type or something like that but it's it would have to be against the wood and you know uh, oh, is there any other thing if you had something solid under there instead that stuck out a bit further but it would have to it would have to fit exactly no it's not gonna work there is no way I'm afraid I mean you know about the nearest thing you could do is you could put some little tiny bits but they're so the the overhang is so tiny that the truth is you before anything you'd probably see them 
you couldn't get a bead around there. About the only thing you could do would be to put some, but anyway, you know, who knows what glue would hold that down. So I think it's a, I genuinely think it's a, it's a non-starter, I'm afraid. So I'm just going to tighten that up a second before this goes down in the hole again. And we've got to thread this back on. Well, worth a try. There we go. There we are. Come on now, up you come. Don't be difficult, I tell you. That is being difficult. Why is it being difficult? Come on, friends. Why is it making itself impossible to come out? Yeah, come on. It's, we weren't doing this a minute ago. You were ready to play the game. Thank you. Devil you up and down. Put these two things on, one after another. <laughs> come on, come on. Yeah, the, the old joy of working with hollow body guitars where you have to keep a hold of the <laughs> components so they don't fall back in and you don't get lost. Holding, holding on tight to these is quite something. Where's it gone? Come on, spin round. this now. It's always the way now. And this time it really is trying to rotate around, whereas the first time it didn't want to move around at all. Stay there. Stay there. Okay, well, yeah, worth a try, eh? <laughs> okay, okay. Well, look, I'm going to do some stretching, um, but we know, and we know the intonation is pretty close. So just a matter of stretching this out now to get the tuning stability, and I'll put the cover back on any second now. I've got Jimi Hendrix looking on over my shoulder in the late evening sunlight. But I think we're good. To almost go. A little bit of polish out, a few finger marks there where I tried that little attempt at sticking down the uh, thing that was never really going to work, but hey, worth a try. Beautiful. All right, I'm going to call it quits for now. Turn everything off. Look at that lovely sunlight that we've got. Let's give you a quick look around before we... Oops. There's Jimmy enjoying the sunlight. Um, and there we have it. Sun going down in West Devon, UK. And uh, thank goodness it's warmed up and stopped being so horrible like it's been for a while. So thank you for watching. Um, lovely guitar. Um, see you again.